couple of verses in the New Testament. Um, what's really been on my mind the last uh, few hours is the idea of choice. Choice. The fact that we have a choice to make. You know, we make choices every day. You know, we make choices as to where we go and what we say and what we do, but there's choices that we need that we need to make that are important, really important. You see, it doesn't matter when you really whether you go and shop in Aldi's or whether you shop in Asda. You know, at the end of the day, that's not going to affect. It might affect your pocket a wee bit, and might get it cheaper in Aldi's. But you know, we make all sorts of choices that that are immaterial, really. They don't really change anything. But you know, there are other choices that change everything. And that's the choice that I want to bring before us this afternoon. The choice that changes everything. And way back in the, the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter number 30, uh, Moses is speaking to the people of Israel. And he says in verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live, that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cleave to him for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto uh, your fathers, to Abram, to Isaac, to Jacob, uh, to Abraham. So Moses is really saying, I'm setting a choice before you. You have a decision to make it's a decision between life and death, blessing and cursing. And then we go to the book of uh, Joshua, and Callum, Callum, Callum will be speaking to the book of Joshua later on at uh, the three o'clock meeting. Uh, he'll be in Joshua chapter 6, the fall of Jericho. But uh, at the end of Joshua, in uh, chapter number 24, Joshua stands before the children of Israel. And he speaks to them and he says these words. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the idols which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the idols which your father served that were on the other side of the flood. Or the idols of the Amorites in whose land did dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose. Make a choice as to who you're going to serve. And then a couple of verses in Matthew's Gospel. Matthew's Gospel in chapter number 27. Uh, 27. And we'll just kind of break into the story. Um, uh, verse number 21 this is the story of the trial of the Lord Jesus and uh, Pilate is trying to do everything he can to release Jesus Pilate knows that Jesus was innocent he knew there was no reason why he should crucify him but the people are pressurising the, the Pharisees, the religious people are really putting him under a tremendous amount of pressure and, and, and Pilate's trying to get away out He's trying to keep everybody happy. Uh, and he says, you know, he says, normally at this time of the year, he says, we release a prisoner. He says, do you, want me, do you want me to release Jesus? And they says, no, no, we don't want you to release Jesus. We want, to, we want you to release Barabbas. And it says in verse 20, 21, that the governor answered and said to them, whether of the two will you that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they all say unto him, let him be crucified. We made a choice. We have a choice to make. In life, we have a choice to make in this meeting, this afternoon. It's a choice that is very simple. It's a choice that is straightforward. It's a choice that is so clear cut. It's a choice between life and death. It's a choice between heaven and hell. It's a choice ultimately between God and Satan. Between Christ and the world. We have a choice to make. Every one of us has a choice 
to me. And I just want to encourage you to ponder, to think seriously about the choice that you will make this afternoon in relation to life and death, blessing and cursing, heaven and hell. It's a choice for life, and yet it is a choice for eternity. A choice can be made this afternoon between you and God that will affect the rest of your life and will affect the whole of your eternity. It's a solemn thing, isn't it, to realise that we're going to live forever. Thankfully, no doubt here, in this sin-corrupted world, but we are going to live forever. Every individual will live either in heaven or in hell. And our place, our destiny for eternity is determined by the choice that we make. The choice that we make in relation to Christ. It's a choice that needs to be made personal. It's a personal choice. You know, there's a sense in which your choice will affect others. But don't let others affect your choice. That was Pilate's problem. He let others affect the choice that he made. Pilate knew. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, Pilate knew in his heart of hearts, he knew that Jesus was innocent. God had done everything he possibly could to impress upon Pilate the need to take sides of Jesus. He even woke up his wife in the middle of, in the middle of a, a, an afternoon's nap. Having had a dream about this righteous man, Pilate's wife had come and knocked in his office door and said to him, hey Pilate, I don't you have anything to do with that guy. Don't, 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 don't do what the crowds want you, want you to do. He's a righteous man. There's consequences for rejecting him. And Pilate allowed other people to affect the choice that he made in relation to Jesus. You know the tragedy? But through walking light this afternoon, there are people allowing others to affect the choice that we make in relation to Jesus. They're listening to the voice of the crew. They're listening to the voice of the world. They're listening to the voices of their friends, the voices of their companions. They're listening to the voice of their relatives. And even although they know in their heart of hearts the right thing to do is to trust Christ, to choose for Christ, to surrender to Christ, they don't do that because they've allowed others to affect the choice. You know, the choice that you make for Christ will affect us. It will affect us. You receive Christ as your Savior this afternoon. You yield to Christ as your Lord, and that will affect your life, and therefore it will affect the lives of people around about you. You, you will never be the same. Your, your household will never be the same. Your companions, everything will change if you receive Christ. And your choice of Christ can affect others. But please, 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 don't let others affect your choice for Christ. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. Well, we, need to, we need to choose personally. It's a personal matter between you and God. As life and death is placed before you, as blessing and cursing, as heaven and hell is placed before you, you need to make a personal choice. 
just what the crowd were given a choice that day. What do you want, Barabbas or Jesus? And almost in one voice they cried, Give us Barabbas! And almost with one voice, the world today is saying, Crucify Jesus, crucify Jesus. The world doesn't want him. The world doesn't want him. If the world wanted Jesus, this little hall would be packed to capacity. People would be queuing up at the doors. But the world doesn't want him. So the question comes down to you. Choose wiser. Choose wiser. You know, there's a wee word that we get time and time again in the Bible. And it's the wee word consider. Consider. Ponder, think about it. The writer to the Hebrews, you know, he says in Hebrews 12, he says, Consider him, consider Jesus. Well, then we might just take a few moments, right now, just to consider the Lord Jesus. Just to consider who he is. And consider what he's done. You know, we're thinking this morning of who he is. He's God. Almighty, eternal. And yet he stepped in with this world to die for our sins. <laughs> can you explain? Can you grasp the wonder of that? You know, you know the kind of selfish world that we live in? When people are always wanting to ask saying, they want to get up the ladder. It doesn't matter who's hurt in the process. It doesn't matter how many people are trampled under feet. People want to go on in life. They want to, they want to, they want to make a mark on things. And here was Jesus, that one who was so rich, and yet for us he became so poor, so high, and yet for us he became so low. And he left the glory of heaven for the grief of Calvary. The suffering, the anguish, the agony of that cross. He came voluntary to the cross to die for you and me. Consider him. Kindness. And the fact that we have family and friends that care for us, that love us. The fact that we're here this afternoon under the sound of his word is an evidence of his goodness. Consider the great things that he's done. And then there's another verse that says, Consider your ways. Think carefully about the way that you're living. Because the way that you live will affect the way you die. If you live apart from God, then you'll die apart from God. If you live without them, you'll die without them. And you'll be in eternity without them. So my friend, the big thing is to be wise this afternoon and think carefully. Think about Christ. Think about the goodness of God in your life. Think about the way you're living your life. Has there been a response to God's grace? Or is your life just centered in you and yours? I know we've all responsibility to farm it. And we've responsibility to make our way in this world. But, but you know, first and foremost in our lives there should be God. And a desire to know him, a desire to please him. A desire to serve him. To honour him. Consider your life and serve him. This little spell that God gives us in this planet. What are we doing with it? We're just living it for the pursuit of our own selfish desires. Or are we taking our little lives and just yielding them to God? 
an appreciation of his love towards us in sending his son to die for us on the cross. There's another wee verse in the Old Testament, again, it's in the book of Deuteronomy, and we read these words, consider your latter end. Not only to think about Christ and to think about the good things that God has done in our lives and, and, and to think about the way that we're living, but to think about the end. Think about the end. It's the last thing folks want to think about, isn't it? But it's the big thing that people should be thinking about. Because we're only here for a wee while. The Bible says life is just like a vapor, it just appears and disappears. We need to consider the end. Because if we live without Christ, we'll die without Christ, and we'll perish without them eternally. So choose personally, choose wisely, choose timely. What did Joshua say to the people? He says, choose you this day, this day. Not tomorrow. He says, choose this day, who you This day. There's a verse in the New Testament that says, Behold, now, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Why? Because we don't know what another day will bring. No, we just don't know what another day will bring. Tomorrow might just be eternity hidden from our view. And so we need to choose not only personally and wisely, but timely. We need to choose them. If you knew for certain that this was your last day on little planet Earth, what choice would you make? If you knew that tomorrow you would stand before your maker God, what choice would you make in relation to Jesus? And you say, well, I would accept him as a saviour. Well, if that was the choice that you would make, knowing that this is your last day on earth, it may be your last day on earth. So make that choice to trust Jesus today. Choose decisively. Make a clear cut choice. You know, there's no fence to sit on. That's what so many people, they want to sit in the fence in relation to the person of the Lord Jesus, in relation to living a life for God. They want the best of both worlds. You know, that's what, the, that's what uh, Moses was telling the children of Israel. He says, no guys, you can't have the best of both worlds. There's one world and the other. You can't serve the gods of your fathers and serve the God of heaven. You can't live for yourself and live for God. It's a decisive decision to place everything in the altar and give it to God because he deserves it. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. No turning back. Will you decide him? To follow Jesus. No turning back. My friend, Jesus Christ gave his life for you at the cross. He did it because he loves you. Loves you more than your dearest and earth loves you. Loves you with a love that is indescribable, that is unfathomable, that is unmerited. That love that took Jesus to the cross to become the bearer of your sins demands a response. As we quoted already, love so amazing, so divine demands your heart, your life, your all.
He gave his life for you. He demands that you give your life for him. There can be no other logical response to Calvary than the giving up of our lives to Jesus. The surrender of all. That's really what baptism is all about. In this hall on Friday night at 7 o'clock, Miriam and Micah are going to be baptised. And what they're really declaring in, the, in their baptism is simply this. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. They're really saying we're prepared to pay the price, to pay the cost of being a disciple of Christ. But we don't no longer we want to live for the world. The world that crucified Jesus. We no longer longer want to live for self. We no longer want to indulge in sin. We want our lives to be given over to Jesus. We want to follow him. And we want to publicly declare that we are identified with Jesus Christ who died on the cross. We have a choice to make. I've set that choice before you, just as Moses and and, and Joshua set a choice before the people, and Pilate set a choice before the people. I can't even make that choice for you. I've simply set it out. The choice is yours. Choose personally. The choice that you make will affect others. But don't allow others to affect the choice you make. Choose wisely. In consideration of the greatness and the grace of God that has been demonstrated in your life and demonstrated at the cross. And choose timely, choose now, choose Christ now, trust Him, yield your life to Him, give yourself over to Him, and choose decisively. That you're going to turn your back on sin, and turn your back on this world, realizing the world is nothing you offer us, and say, from this moment onwards, my life is wholehearted. Get it over to Jesus. He's my saviour. He's my master. He's my everything. He is my all. Oh, choose you this day. Do you yourself. Father, we just commit your words.